No, I'm not on the beach, but if you get beached up here, then you're in trouble. Because, uh, yeah, this means you went way too fast down straight and cross and braked way too little. Or maybe you ran out of brakes. In any case, good morning comrades. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back onto the Nürburgring Kinoschleife. Our third series of 2023 track walk where we'll walk on the Nordschleife and where I'll be talking you through the corners, how to do them, how not to do them, some other interesting trivia. But first, a mandatory disclaimer, can you just walk on the track just like that? Mm, only when the track is closed. Officially, it's also not allowed, so better not to do it because even when it's closed, there still might be some traffic. And now this year you have even construction works. You can randomly fall into a manhole and uh, then you might try to sue the Nürburgring. Better not to do it and etc. etc. But uh, just use your brain and Nürburgring is also organizing official track walks where you can do it during the year, once in a month or maybe two months. You can even cycle it, so check it out on their website. And uh, thank you Nürburgring for officially allowing me to make this video for you. So I'm doing it under permission, under liability, statement, etc. But anyway, uh, on to the main topic, as mentioned, we already walked towards Arnberg, a very hard braking zone, where now we will be proceeding to our descent into Faxel, one of the most exciting sections of the Nürburgring Nordschleife. What you can see here is actually something that you only notice when you are on foot, and that's this massive gradient massive elevation change and the camber that you have here it's also a very nice spectator area if you end up on the other side of the fence because you can see cars breaking into here with glowing brake discs and then proceeding with glowing exhaust pipes the descent downhill a quick reference point that I want to show you is that from here after the curbstone you run wide sometimes you also end up on the curbstone on the left but it is quite high so I advise you to avoid it and then a nice reference point that we cannot see right now because it's blocked by one of the foundation blocks such as there over there the Marshall Post 93 a small white sign gives you a good reference to aim to the right side of the track before proceeding with a descent into Foxhall on the left side. So let's quickly go there. And behind this foundation block, we can see this small sign, white sign of 93, which means the Marshall Post 93 that you can use, as mentioned, as a reference. Now, speaking of those signs, they serve also another purpose. In case you have a breakdown or an accident, or you've seen someone else have a breakdown or accident and you park alongside the track they they have the SOS number underneath them so it says 08302112 it's something I definitely recommend you to save in your phone in case that you would need to call the emergency services because then you can say like uh I am on a part of the track and I don't know what's it called you know that it goes downhill or you can actually tell them like hey I am actually at the Marshall Post 93 so for example I also have it saved here if you're calling from a foreign number maybe you would need to do plus 49 800 and then you will be connected with the Marshall office uh, by the way the back side of them are black that is to indicate in case you spun made like 360 or maybe like Tony Hawk 900 and you don't know which direction you're facing at the moment black one means you're facing the opposite direction and the white means you are facing in the correct direction in case you know that you need to turn around or where to park etc etc but in any case as mentioned white sign from here you have a very clear straight line towards the descent of Foxhall. So you aim for the left curb, right curb, try to find the ideal straight line between them two to then actually go over a small jump, which is a very exciting but also very unsettling, especially if you drive in the wet with a rear wheel driven car because then your car jumps, your rear wheels lose traction and when you land again and if you're not traveling straight, yeah, you know what's gonna happen next. Just to indicate, over there we have this Marshall Post 93 where we're standing and in a straight line you go towards this left curbstone and the jump that we mentioned previously. And then from here you have again a very nice straight outlook towards the complete bottom of Foxhall over there. So again you go in a straight line towards the right curbstone, the right Marshall Post and then the left side to end up on the right side. It's very complicated. Uh, but yeah, and also very high speed because the bottom you reach 
depending on the car and depending on the size of your, well, you know what I mean, 250 kilometers per hour, sometimes even 270 with, with extremely fast car and fast stable car, but even around 200 kilometers per hour to go through the bottom of compression, it's very important that you keep your car straight, that you are traveling in a straight smooth direction and don't try to go on the brakes at the very bottom. Again, one of the most beginner mistakes is go as fast as you can here because you're overly excited. And then you'll, you realize like, oh wait, there's a turn to the left and the uphill section, I need to go on the brake. Do not unsettle the car. So go brake before if you have to, what you should be doing. You also see me quite often do that before if I don't trust the car that I'm driving. And then you can go smoothly on the gas a bit again, through the bottom, always be on the gas through the bottom and then end up on the right side to go on the brakes again. But we will see it in a second. Just one more thing I want to mention, before the descent, since last year, they resurfaced this small patch of tarmac over here. And it would unsettle your car quite a lot, but luckily, after one year of driving, the edges have been smoothened out, so it's not as bad as it used to be, but still, you can see quite a difference, and it may seem minimal, but when you're driving here, with over 200 kilometers per hour, yeah, you feel it quite a lot. So your car needs to be really set up, so be cautious of this little patch here. And of all the dirt here, but this will be gone by the time the trunk will be reopened. As you're making your way downhill and you arrive roughly here, Adrian is currently making a nice shot to show you the massive elevation change that you will probably not see when you're driving or not notice as much. So aim towards the left curb that you currently do not see because of the construction works and then to the right curb over there, position yourself straight next to it. So let's go quickly over there because it's very important for a smooth, stable braking zone. You can pretty much see from here that it is a straight line. But before we get there more up close, I want to show you this. Look at that. Watch out. There's a creek. So in case you are having an accident and you're losing oil and fuel, you need to make sure that all of that is not going into the air, into the water, and does not contaminate groundwater. I really like how this, like these small things, small remarks, try to preserve our nature over here. So you need to really pay attention to it. And by the way, another artifact that you can see here are those scrape marks. They're usually from the race cars, especially the GT3s that arrive here with 250 kilometers per hour with massive downforce through the bottom to then proceed again to the top hill. You can actually hear them scraping through here. So you have here scrapings over here and then one more scrape zone over here. Yep, and actually I don't remember the exact number but the forces that your suspension needs to withstand through here and your tires, your tires become almost pretty much flat. You end up driving pretty much on the, um, what's it called, on your rim. That's why it's important to take care of your tire pressures and the tire condition because, yeah, on the same way, this is why the Nürburgring Nordschleife is the most extreme racetrack and it comes to being the most like the ultimate proving ground for any track, any car, because you have here all the elevation changes, the compressions, the jumps, etc, etc. Anyway, let's not get carried away. As mentioned, you have here this nice curb stone that when you look at it, it's perfectly straight. So use this straight line to have a straight braking. And over there, you will see a white sign, which is actually a warning sign for motorcyclists, but the white sign is also a very good turning point towards the left side or the left curbstone or the exit. Depends on how you look at things of Foxhall. So let's quickly get there. Just to show you from this white sign, you have a very nice exit point, which is now hard to see because there's all the foundation dug up, but from here is a very nice turning point where you can take the left curb stone. I usually take it all the time, except for in wet conditions. And once you get here on top and over this curb stone, after coming from the downhill, again, one of the unique opportunities to look when we're here on foot, at the elevation changes, it's important to go on the brakes for the Adenau Force. Again, it's one of the sections where people get very overwhelmed after going extremely fast. And it's also blind turning and you think like, okay, we're in a high speed section. It continues going high speed. Nope. You then approach Arnau Forst, which is one of the slowest sections of the track. So 
Braking hard, then turning in to the right curb stone, running wide to the left side, and then going straight for the barrier on the right side towards Arenal Forest, which is probably the second most famous Nürburgring fail compilation corner because everyone is going, well, not everyone, the majority, and especially, well, let's say, all, many of the beginners are going straight on the grass because of its blind configuration. So, a quick fast forward towards there. I don't know, forced, very technical. Also, watch out for a pedestrian crossing over here, which used to be an official thing many, many years ago because you could just simply walk here on the track, park here, back in the golden days, over 50 years ago. There are many approaches to do this corner. Usually, the rule of the thumb is stay on the right as much as possible so you can take this left turn, unless you decide to go straight on the grass, which I do not recommend. What I personally like to do, my personal preference, is stay as much as possible on the left and then at the end of the left curb stone over there to turn to the right curb. Therefore, you sacrifice this corner and you have higher let's say, distance and swing to the right side to then proceed to the main straight towards Metzgesfeld, which benefits your acceleration and also the final top speed. Some people, again, it depends on the car. You can also stay on the middle-ish and then turn in. But I guess at the end of the day, the most important thing is that you do not end up on the grass, and not go straight and end up on stateside supercars video or auto addiction depends who will be filming that particular day from that angle over there last final thing watch out with accelerating out of this corner because on the left side where the ideal line is it's very slippery due to all the accumulated rubber from the dry days so in the wet watch out from there and then proceed towards Metzgesfeld something that we will cover in one of the upcoming videos because this was a quite a long special episode about Foxhole but I hope you enjoyed it, saw the elevation changes, saw the reference points, get you up to speed, up to date, freshen your memory up before proceeding with driving the track in a couple of weeks time. So yeah, looking forward to seeing you do that. Looking forward to seeing you here at the ring or on my channel or, or, or have a good time, have a good day, have a good track time and see you then. Bye.